Hey everybody, what's up? A lot of you have sent me a lot of feedback about my videos, which is great. Thank you so much. One of the common themes that I hear is people say, you know, you got a lot of videos that focus on people that are sort of like sophomores, juniors, seniors in college, P people that have already have some programming experience. And that's true. I don't have a lot of introductory getting started videos about programming until now. So today I'm going to teach you how to program in C in five minutes. Obviously, I'm not going to cover everything, but we're going to get you started. So let's talk about what you're going to need. First of all, you're going to need a computer. I'm going to use a Mac. You can use Windows or Linux. No problem. The examples we're looking at should pretty much work on any computer. Second, you need a terminal window. If you're new to programming, you may not have done much in the terminal. All it is is it's a text-based window that allows you to type commands to your computer. So it allows you to send commands and then the computer is going to do stuff. That's going to be important. We are going to use a terminal in this video and pretty much any operating system out there has a terminal, has some version of the terminal. Third, you're going to need a compiler. A compiler is a program that translates your code that you're going to write in C into binary code that the computer knows how to execute. So it's basically a translator. It takes code that you can understand and puts it in a form that the computer can understand it. And which compiler should you use? I recommend you use either GCC or Clang. They're both free. They both work really well. They're both used by probably hundreds of thousands of developers out there. I don't know how many, but a lot of people. Depending on what operating system you're using, these compilers might actually already be installed on your computer. But if they're not, that's no problem. Just pause this video and go out and install GCC or Clang and then come back. Finally, you're going to need a text editor. Now, I'm going to use Atom, but there are a lot of text editors out there that will work. The important thing is that they edit raw text files, just straight up text files. So Word is not going to work. Pages are not going to work. You don't want a word processor here because those programs embed stuff like fonts and bold and italics and you just want to edit raw text files. And as long as you can edit raw text files, you should be fine. So now we're ready to code. A C program consists of the following pieces. You have preprocessor commands. These are also sometimes called macros. You have variable declarations, type definitions, function definitions, statements and expressions and comments. And if we look at the first program everybody writes, that's hello world. We just, so just type this code into your text editor and save it, preferably with a .c extension. And in case you're new to programming, it's important that you type it in just the way that it's shown here. Computers aren't smart enough to figure out what you mean. They just know what you type in and even typing an uppercase character when you mean a lowercase character, you know, it can totally mess things up. So it's important that you pay attention to the details. Now, if we look at this program, you can see some of these pieces. The pound include statement here that this is a preprocessor command. Anything that's going to the preprocessor starts with a pound. And today we're not going to do much with the preprocessor because most of the time you don't need it. But the one thing you do need is the ability to include files. And so includes allow you to include code from another file into your program. And in this case, we're including standard IO or stdio.h, which is part of the C standard library. So it's on any computer you might be working on. The .h extension means the file is a header, which is a file that contains declarations usually. And for now, it allows us to use the printf function, which you see down down below. The rest of the program is a function definition. Functions are blocks of code that do something. Think of it as a piece of your program that does a particular task or a particular component. This function is main and it's a special function because anytime that we run a program, the computer needs to know where to start. Now in C, typically main is where your program will start. So a function has a name, main in this case. It can take arguments, but this one doesn't. They would go in the parentheses if it had arguments, but it doesn't. And it could, and well, we'll get to that. It can also produce a result. In this case, main's result will be an integer or an int. That's what this int means. It means that main will actually have a result and it's going to be a number. This means that when main is done, it's going to produce a number that represents whether it ran correctly or ran into some error. For now, we'll ignore this, but we'll come back to it either in this video or maybe, maybe the next one if I don't get to it. So back in the terminal, I can compile this program by typing clang or gcc and the name of the program. And then it produces a program called a.out. And you can run it and you can see that it prints the message to the terminal. You can also give it a name because a.out really isn't a great name. And you see we can run it with the new name, no problem. Okay, now let's go back to the code and explore a few more of those program pieces that I mentioned earlier. So first we can declare a variable. Now, whenever you declare a variable in C, you start with the type. This tells the compiler what type of variable I want. In this case, I want an integer, but I could use float or double if I want my number to be able to represent fractions as well. 
And there are also types like structures, arrays, pointers, and we'll get to those later probably in the next video. Now, after the type, you put the variable's name. Now, in this case, I called it my number, but I could really call it anything. Value, cat, dog, horse, George. It's a good name, don't you think? But seriously, the best names for variables are names that communicate something about what the variable does. This is just a demo, so it doesn't really have a purpose. I'm just trying to show you I can print out a variable. And we can also initialize this variable to some value. Now, this is optional, but remember that if you don't initialize it, then you don't really know what it is. It could be anything, and that could give you interesting results. Interesting, like not in a good way. We can print out our variable by adding a percent %i to our printf call. And this says that, hey, you know where I'm saying hello world? Well, I also want to print out an integer. And then listing the int that we want to print after the format string. So the, this first string, the, the bit in quotes, basically says this is the format of what I want to output. That percent %i is just a placeholder, and then I list what the variables that I actually want to print out later on, and separate it with commas. And we can declare more variables, and we can do arithmetic with those variables, and we can print out those variables. So far, we've been using one function, that's printf. And we've also used main, it's sort of the special case. But you can also write your own functions, and I want to show you how to do that really quick. So here's a quick example. Now, in reality, you probably would never make a function this simple. Yours will do something more complicated and more ingenious, but this helps to illustrate how things work. So the function is called add3 because it adds three numbers. It takes three arguments, they're all ints, they're listed here, separated by commas, and it returns a result which is also an int. Now, just like main, everything between the curly braces is the function's code. So that's true of any function definition. The curly braces basically say everything between these curly braces belongs to this function. And then we can use the return keyword to end the function and return a result to the user. And be sure the thing you return is actually an int. And now we can call our new function from back in main and beautiful, look, it just, it works. Hey, there you go. I, I called my function, I got my result, I printed it out, wonderful. Okay, now new programmers often tend to put all of their code into main, but I show you functions from the beginning because you're not gonna be that programmer. You're not gonna be like that. Because long, complicated, run-on functions can get really hard to understand, they can get hard to read, they force people to scroll a lot, and breaking your code down into smaller logical bite-sized chunks is gonna make it easier to understand and easier to read. It probably also will make it easier to test at some point. So now you know how to get a program up and running, you know how to declare variables, you know how to print stuff out to the terminal, and you know how to write functions. So I think that's enough for today. I think that's where I'm gonna stop. At this point, you know enough to start playing around. So go write some programs, go write your own functions, go declare some variables, print stuff out, practice. No, seriously, there are things in this world that you can learn by watching. Programming isn't one of them. If you wanna learn this stuff, you have gotta go out and do it. So go practice, change my code, figure out how all the pieces work, and I'll see you next time when we build on this video and we talk a little bit more about types in C.